So with the release of AMD's new Vega graphics cards, they released a technology called HBCC, or High Bandwidth Cache Controller. Now this is a portion of the GPU that's dedicated to using extra memory once the already 8GB VRAM buffer has been used up in games. Also, AMD claims that it does make a big performance difference when the conditions are right. So today we're going to make sure that the conditions are right, and we're also going to look at minimum frame rates both in the 1% forms and also minimum FPS, and see if it does indeed make a difference to your gaming experience. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, this is Brian coming to you guys today with a look at HBCC, which is a technology that was touted at the start of 2017, and now that Vega has been released, it is a technology that's included and you can enable this in the global Watman software feature, where it will currently use additional system memory and allocate that as VRAM. However, the problem is at the moment is 8 gigabytes on Vega is actually enough for how powerful the card is. And so we'll see this with some of the testing we've got up here. The first test was Deus Ex Mankind Divided, where I did max this out at 4K and I did up the anti-aliasing to the point where we were maxing out the 8GB of VRAM buffer on board. Now the problem here was the performance was abysmal when we went to these levels. So in other words, the rest of the hardware besides the 8GB of VRAM was not able to be utilized properly. And this led to a very low performance figure of around 5 average FPS. And now the minimums did go to around 4.3 FPS, however the 1% lows were a little bit lower than that at around 3.8 FPS, so it was very hard to sort of get any usable experience out of this. However, we decided to then turn on HBCC. And now there's two different settings, well there's actually a lot of different settings, but you can set how much of your system memory you want dedicated to the HBCC controller. In this case, we decided to test at both 11.6 gigabytes and also the maximum of 32 gigabytes since I had 32 gigabytes of system memory installed. And when we did both scenarios, it actually scored worse than the original figures that we were getting. What we saw here was the max frame buffer was now going over eight gigabytes. However, the performance was even worse with an average of 5.9 FPS. So the average was very and slightly higher. However, the minimums on the first time around went down to 2.2 with a 1% low of 1.9. And then we had the second time around, again, average of 5.9 FPS with a minimum of 1.1 and 1% low of 1 FPS. So the numbers really were nothing groundbreaking. This technology was simply not doing any work in this game whatsoever when it came to actually bettering the experience because the experience was already so bad to begin with. However, after I did this, I decided to test some different games. And first up, we had Far Cry Primal. And across the results, it was really much spread out the same. This technology on at low, or then on at high, or then even off, it didn't make a difference to your average or even 1% lows. Tom Clancy's The Division was a very similar scenario. And moving on to an old favorite, Crisis, which is a very intensive game. 1440p, when we had playable frame rates, nothing was changing. And of course, the last game that I decided to test was Battlefield 1. So across all these different games, I couldn't find any differences really in the 1% lows and also the average FPS. So HBCC as it stands for gaming doesn't really do much on the Vega architecture. However, with all that said, one area where I feel HBCC could make a huge difference is on the lower end cards. For instance, we recently tested the HD 6950, which is an old graphics card, but it only comes with one gigabyte of frame buffer available. Now, when we tested that in PUBG, that's Players Unknown's Battlegrounds, we saw that that frame buffer really was limiting the graphics card to the point where you were getting a very undesirable, unplayable experience. And so something like this, if it could allocate an extra one gigabyte or two gigabytes of system memory to the actual game itself, I believe you could get a smooth playable experience, at least at 720p low. So I believe technology like this is very useful. I just feel like in the gaming sense, it's not useful on a card that already has eight gigabytes of frame buffer available, especially when the games nowadays are optimized for a certain level of VRAM. And so eight gigabytes is more than enough, especially at 1440p. If we go up to 4K, maybe that's when the card like the Vega 56's 8 gigabytes of frame buffer becomes more useful. However, that being said, you still have to have the other specs available on the graphics card. If you don't have enough stream processors or you don't have enough raw processing power itself, you will again have an undesirable, unplayable experience as we saw in the case of Deus Ex Mankind Divided. When we started upping all those settings, the frame buffer was being stressed 
we were getting like 5 FPS, so it just wasn't practical at all. And although we couldn't find a proper use in gaming, and in fact it was looking like it was actually a detriment to performance, I believe in the professional workflow you may have uses for this. I have heard of AMD having the ability to add in an SSD and using that as a dedicated VRAM buffer, which could spell really good for certain applications that could utilize that extra frame buffer. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below what you think of HBCC. If you have any extra tests you'd like me to do to really stress this technology and see if it makes a difference for the average gamer. But what I could find here today really wasn't anything compelling. And in fact, I thought that this technology could be really useful with older school graphics cards where the games are optimized for say two gigabytes of frame buffer, but you only have one gigabyte available on the card itself. Anyway, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.